In this video, I'm going to be talking about how journaling has personally changed my life and the way that I spend my time. Then I'm going to show you the actual method that I use for journaling and what parts of it are the most important, what I write, and how to make the habit actually stick. I've been journaling for a pretty long time now, it's been at least over a year. Especially considering quarantine, I it's like a time warp, I bet it's been a year and a half. I really started taking it seriously after I heard a Tim Ferriss podcast with Penn Jillette from Penn & Teller, The Magic Act. And he talked about how he keeps a journal every day where he writes about the events that happened in the previous day and he tries to recall it in as much detail as possible. And he said that this has helped him really recognize patterns throughout his life and just helps him realize how bad his memory actually is because he'll remember an event and talk to somebody about it, but then he'll go back and look up what he wrote and it would say something completely different. And I felt that this was pretty interesting, so I wanted to start it myself to see if I saw the same results. In the beginning, I used journaling as a way to just get thoughts out of my head and onto paper, and it didn't really give me that much benefit doing this, besides maybe reorganizing my thoughts a little bit because I had to think about my day each day, so maybe it helped me remember things a little better, but it didn't really provide that much value in the long run. I forgot one of the main things about what Pendulette does. So what Pendulette does is every day before he writes his journal he reads three or four that he's written in the past so he'll read one from 15 years ago one from five years ago one from a year ago and he'll just see how his thoughts have changed over time and how his life has changed over time. It wasn't until I started to read my journals regularly that I started to see the actual benefits of journaling. I started to see what trends my thoughts have gone through over the last few months, and I was really able to pick out patterns that were occurring each day, both good and bad. There were days where I would be feeling good or feeling bad, and I would think that these were unique experiences that haven't happened to me before, but then when I looked at my past journal entries, I was realizing that I had these feelings on multiple days, and they were caused from the same source, and I felt the same way because of it. When you start to realize that a thought or feeling is reoccurring, you're able to then address it, and that was one of the huge benefits to journaling. You really get to see what's important to you. Throughout the day, you don't really get a chance to consolidate your thoughts throughout the last month, or you don't even remember your thoughts clearly, because the way your brain works is it really works in short-term memory only. Your long-term memory is actually pretty terrible. So actually journaling like this helped me realize how bad it was at remembering how I felt and just being able to reevaluate that was an important part of journaling. There were many patterns that I realized throughout this journaling process that helped. One of the main ones in the beginning was actually my video game addiction. I knew it was a problem, but I didn't realize how bad it was until I read about how many days I wasn't productive because of it. And I would write it down that I wasted so much time today playing X game for X amount of hours and it would just add up, but it wasn't the actual amount of time that I spent playing, it was just how it made me feel on those days. When you're playing a video game, it feels good. It definitely was not a good thing to be doing. So I realized that this pattern kept occurring on multiple days and I was able to finally get rid of it because of this. And it wasn't like I didn't want to quit before. I knew that it was a problem, but when I saw my past self struggling over and over again, it just really motivated me enough to push myself over the edge and just turn off the games forever. And since that realization, I've been able to get so much more done and just feel better about how I spend my time. Honestly, if I didn't even start journaling, you probably wouldn't be seeing this video because I would not have the time to make it. It can take a while until you have enough journal entries built up to start to recognize these patterns. So it's important to make it a habit early on. And one way that I would do that is just by using a simple habit tracker just in my planner right here. It's just at the bottom, you just mark what you did with an X and it's just so simple. You can make that yourself. But I found that just physically checking off it every day helped. You could even use an app to remind you, but you should really try to find whatever method keeps you consistent enough for it to start to matter. So what should you actually be writing in your journal? I would say it could be whatever you want, but I'll tell you what I do personally. Normally when I start off my journals, I just start with my current mood so I can get a sense of what this day is going to be like. Sometimes I feel like I didn't do enough in the day. I'll just write that. I felt like I needed more time or it was a pretty good day. I got a lot done. And that just helps me get a baseline of where my feelings were at when I was writing this. Then I usually just have a quick session where I just write whatever is currently on my mind. And I don't recall what was happening in the day yet at this point. I just write whatever is currently on my mind in like a stream of consciousness kind of way where I just write whatever comes up. And I do this for a few minutes. And then after I feel like I've finished off my thoughts, I move on to recalling what happened throughout the day. When I have time, I try to be as detailed as possible. Sometimes I'll take up to 15, 20 minutes writing this part of the journal. And other times I'll just use a minute or two if I'm in a rush. What, no matter what, I try to get as much detail as I can for the amount of time that I have. Some days I literally write what conversations I had and what they were about, even specific things that were said. 
just so I could remember them. If they were important, if they weren't important, I won't write them down. I could include pictures or links to articles that I read, and it just helps me realize what happened throughout the day. It may seem very tedious doing all this, but once I started doing it for a while and I would look back, it, this was really one of the parts that make you realize how bad your memory is, because you write things that you will not remember in two weeks from now, and it's insane to think that. It's fun to look back and see what events occurred that might have led to what your life is like in the future. And this has happened to me where basically the butterfly effect, one little thing you don't realize is that important, can have a huge impact in the future. And it's nice to be able to look back and be like, oh wow, that's where this started. And this small little detail caused this to happen. So it's just cool to see things like that throughout the journaling process. So I would encourage anyone watching this to really deeply consider starting journaling. Even if you just do it lightly on the side, you don't have to take it that seriously. Just write a few bullets each day if you, at the bare minimum. And if you can, try to do something similar to me where I write my thoughts and what happened in the day. I hope that I've been able to convince you to incorporate journaling into your life. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos from me, subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.